Hi there and welcome to another Whiteboard Friday with My Eternity Genius. Now today we're going to be looking at what is green. And indeed, what is green? It could be a Sherlock Holmes novel, Fifty Shades of Green. Because no one really knows what green actually is. In fact, the greenest people in the UK, Grimble Hulk, Shrek, and the Jolly Green Giant, because almost everybody else is may think they're green, but they're not necessarily green at all. So let's start off with what does green energy actually mean? Now, principally, we can look at A and B to start with, which is renewable energy and reducing CO2 emissions into the atmosphere or climate change. The first thing people need to understand is that just sticking your flag in the ground for renewable and saying, that's my thing, you need to investigate a bit more because renewable energy may involve things like burning wood, Fine, you can grow it, so technically it is a renewable resource, but unless the trees are being grown, are you actually getting your electricity from a green source? You can look at it from the point of view of CO2, CO2 emissions. Now, under the, under the definition of green with CO2, nuclear power is definitely green. You're not burning anything. You know, all you end up with is something that has a half-life of eight and a half thousand years, but what the heck? That is immaterial if CO2 is actually what floats your boat. Trying to determine whether something is green under the renewable flag or green under the CO2 flag, there's actually more to it than may at first meet the eye. One of them is the lifetime cost, i.e. if it costs in carbon terms or in environmental damage terms a huge amount to create the asset that generates the energy then you need to look at the total lifetime cost of carbon or the total lifetime cost of environmental impact. So that would look at things like how much carbon and environmental impact does it take to uh, manufacture a large scale wind turbine, to manufacture solar panels. You need to start looking at that to work out is something actually a green source of, of energy or not. You can look at it from the point, you need to look at rather, it from the point of view of additionality. If it isn't, if the, the act of you buying the tariff doesn't actually increase the amount of green or renewable generation in the country as a whole and move us towards a completely sustainable target of 20%, 30%, whatever the government happens to think of that week, then actually, are you really being that green? Because you're not, all you're doing is you're stealing some green energy from somebody else who was green too, but maybe was prepared to pay just a little bit less than you were. The final sort of caveat that you need to look at is, are there other environmental benefits to the particular source of energy that you're looking at? Are they looking at um, saving, saving forests? What else is there that might factor into that? Now, the analysis can be quite difficult. We put up here nuclear power and cow poo, which is, you know. Um, this, well, what you're doing is you're taking something that has already had a lot of energy extracted out of it, throwing in some uh, microbes and extracting yet more energy out of what is inherently waste and would normally be uh, chucking methane up into the atmosphere. So you're removing methane from the atmosphere, turning it into CO2. You're still responsible for CO2, but you're also responsible for a complete reduction of methane. Is that green? But it doesn't really fall under the definition of either of these two. Not particularly. Certainly doesn't help with this one necessarily at all. So there are lots of things that make this subject particularly complicated. What you can look at from the point of view of a supplier is, let's take this square here. Now, we have one, two, three, four little squares underneath. They all look varying shades of green. This is effectively what a supplier does. These are all the green tariffs that they're offering you. They're offering this to you because you've expressed an interest in being ethical and trying to be greener than green. However, if you lift the green filter away, more less charitably known as greenwashing, which it isn't, what you end up with is varying shades of things that are quite clearly not necessarily green at all. That is a function of the fact that there is no single definition for green. The government has not stepped up, the uh, regulators have not stepped up, nobody has really stepped up to the plate and given us a definition of green. The green energy certificate that does exist is kind of saying, well, if you've got some certificates and you attach them to the, am the amount of electricity that you use, that then qualifies them. But some of those certificates can be shunted in from France, they can come through from gas-fired generation that meets certain standards. The certificate also suggests that there's a minimum level 
of additional environmental benefit that that tariff needs to be delivering, but it doesn't quantify what the minimum level actually is. It also forces those suppliers to sign up to an annualised audit where they, the tariffs are, are subject to audit by the, by the scheme. But it doesn't really tick the right sorts of boxes. The reality is only you can tick your own green box because green ultimately is a subjective thing. It is not objective. There is no single measure to be able to deliver against it. So you need to look into all these things, the lifetime cost, additionality. Do you want CO2? Do you want renewable? Which one is more important to you? And then pick the tariff on the back of that. It is not useful or helpful to just simply look at something and say, it's green, therefore I'm going to buy it. That has probably been about as helpful as a chocolate fire guard, but we've tried our best. Until next time, see you later.